Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the image and terrain factories a little more in depth. We briefly covered them in the last lesson, but they're really powerful and really important. So I want to make sure that we spend enough time talking about them so you understand how they can really be used. I've created a new scene in our project called the Mapbox demo scene. And this isn't going to stay in the project at all. I just wanted to set something apart so that we could take a look without the distraction of everything else going on in the game. To look at the image and terrain factories, let's drill down into the map holder inside of the AR tabletop kit, and then we'll click on the map route. We're going to look for this abstract map script that's attached to the map route. And then we're going to scroll down just a bit to the image and terrain. Now the image is pretty straightforward. We played with this a little bit when we set up our custom style with Mapbox Studio. But there are a few options that we really want to talk about, and I want to show you the difference here. So Mapbox Streets, if we press play, should look really familiar. We've got a whole bunch of buildings and the park and the streets with their street names and everything, all of the basic data is there. If we swap over to Mapbox Outdoors, since it's a different data source, it's going to come back with entirely different data and entirely different look. And as you'll notice when we scroll in, it's less focused on the buildings and more focused on things like the pathways going through this park. It's pre-optimized with all of this park and outdoor information that you may need or desire if you're building an app that has to do more with nature and less with a city. Going back to the map route and clicking on the data sources, Mapbox Dark and Light are really just two different color themes. There's not a whole lot to them. As you might imagine, the Mapbox Dark is pretty dark. It's based in blacks and grays and everything that you would expect from a darker theme, while Mapbox Light is the exact opposite. Mapbox Satellite, however, is really cool. So we're going to take a look at that one. If we click on play, we can see that it's moving on from just a simple abstract map type to actual satellite images. I mean, this right here is really cool. We've got actual footage of these areas. And depending on what kind of game you're building and how you're building it, this could be extremely useful. It could provide a sense of realism and really help with any theme that you've got going on. And then the Mapbox Satellite Street is going to have that same look and feel to it, just with a little more info. As you can see here, it's got really clear notation for all of the streets. Any info you might want for navigation, it's, it's all there. The next two options are really self-explanatory. You've got custom, which pulls from a custom URL that you provide, such as what we did with Mapbox Studio. And you've also got none, which means your map's going to have no styling. It's just a plain, all we've got is this loading grid. Now, this option does actually have its uses. If, for example, you wanted to provide a data source for the image factory at runtime, you could totally do that. And you could use this none setting to save yourself some API calls and therefore save yourself a little time and money. Going back to another setting, let's just pick Mapbox Streets. Sure. We have a few different options that are really important to know about when dealing with the Mapbox image. And in case you didn't get it by now, this image is pretty self-explanatorily named. It's just an image for the ground. It's a wrapper for that plane to make it look a little prettier and to make it look like a real map. With that in mind, you have three options here for compression and making it look prettier. You've got the Use Retina option, which means if the display that's showing your map is a higher resolution display, like for example, the Retina display, then it's going to provide better visual quality 
and increase texture sizes to help to help make sure it looks right on retina displays. This use compression option is just there to allow Unity to do its thing and provide compression services for the texture. So the wrapper that we saw, if we press play for Mapbox Streets, this image wrapper that we see underneath the buildings, all that is, is a texture. And use compression will allow Unity to handle that automatically. Depending on your situation, you may or may not want that turned on. Typically, if you're more concerned about data transference and connections, then you'll want to use compression to help offset that. Lastly, there's MipMap. MipMap is also known as pyramid tiling. It uses larger images and shrinks them down to help fill spaces and render out textures with less effort. Typically, we're not going to worry about this option too much, but just know that it's there in case you need it. Now that we've had the chance to talk about images, let's talk about terrain for just a little bit. So the first thing that we can adjust in terrain is the data source, the same way we could with the image, but here there are a lot less options. We've only got the map box terrain that comes standard, custom terrain data, and none. The custom terrain data is there in case you write up your own or have another source, but typically we'll stay in the map box terrain option. Why don't I actually go ahead and scoot this out so you can see that a little better. Here in the elevation layer type, we've got flat terrain, terrain with elevation, low polygon terrain, and globe terrain. The flat terrain is what we've seen before. Where the ground is smushed down, it's a flat surface, surface and there's really nothing to it. Terrain with elevation is going to go ahead and give our map the proper elevation based on its real world height. So just taking a look here, you can kind of see, if we click off of here, that there's a bit of a hill going on here, and it's slowly raising up. That's because of the terrain data. If, for example, there were a mountain here instead of some buildings, then the mountain would be raised up correctly to the proper height in all the right spots. Going back to the map route and back down to the terrain, our next option, low polygon terrain, is a lot like terrain with elevation, only terrain with elevation is going to be the full effect, all the data, where low poly is a lot more mobile and poor network connection friendly. So depending on your use case, you may want to switch between one of those two. Globe terrain is a really cool feature, and we want to take a look at this real quick. What this does is it tries to create essentially a globe out of the terrain. So kind of like a small world effect. And you'll notice that all of these buildings that were on our map are now scrunched together as it tries to pinch into a globe. So let's switch this back to flat. The base material is just the material that we're going to use to skin our terrain. It's just another way that Mapbox is providing a lot of awesome for us. We can use the typical basic terrain material, or we can use our own customized one if we want to give our world a different look. The exaggeration factor is essentially a vertical scaling system. And it's going to be the amount by which we multiply the basic terrain height. So say we had a mountain, we could double it up, change this to two, and the mountain's elevation would increase to two times its original size. We can also add a collider, which is amazing for us. Want your characters to be able to walk up a hill? Done. Need to know when something hits the ground? Finished. You don't want your player running through a mountain? Handled. By adding a collider, we're dynamically handling the landscape and allowing ourselves to use it to our advantage. And the best part is, we don't have to touch a thing. After those main ones, we've got a few more options available to us. We've got the sample count. This just affects the resolution of each tile as far as the terrain goes. Relative height 
is basically just the difference between an absolute height and a scaled height. If we use relative height, then as the world scale shrinks, so will the height. Otherwise, it just goes off of strict data. The Earth radius has more to do with when we've got it set to globe terrain. It's just going to be the size of the Earth in unity units. So we won't worry too much about that one here. Showing sidewalls just helps to get rid of some of the visual artifacts that may show up based on terrains. And with these sidewalls, we can actually set a wall height and add a material to it to help give it whatever kind of local we want. And then another really cool feature here, we can add the terrain to a Unity layer, giving us even more control over it. We can now use it with other Unity objects beyond just what's available to us by adding a collider to it. I know this has been a lot of information, but it's really important that we understand the tools that we're using and all of the features available to us through Mapbox. On a day-to-day -day basis, you might not stray too much from the defaults. However, understanding these gives us a lot of power and gives us a lot of creative freedom so that we can create maps, create brand new worlds, and handle them however we want. Mapbox has done an amazing job providing a great tool for us to use to dynamically build out worlds and make things a lot easier on us as game developers. So great job following along. I know we've covered a lot, but it was super important that we understand everything available to us. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.